now, let's go back. Let's get to the next uh, video with the Israelis. Because you know what happens? Some of our dearly beloved brothers and sisters, they say, you know, Christians are too racist. I'm going to join so-called Jewish people and be and follow Judaism. Like, what's that ball player's name? He wear yarmulkes now. Amari, Not Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire. Amari Stoudemire. Can we get a picture of our brother, Amari Stoudemire? Love the brother. And it's not just him. You have brother Shine, the rapper? Yes. Show me the, both their pictures. Put up Amari Stoudemire. Okay, now that's not Photoshop, right? No, that's real. Okay, here's another brother who has followed the so-called Jewish man because Christianity, he said it, he realized it was all lies. He says they're racist, and now he has joined. <laughs> uh, <laughs> our people are bugged. You're right. Our people are bugged out. Now, again, I'm not bringing this out out of hatred. We love our brothers. We love our sisters. We love them. But now watch this. You think these people are not racist again? Give me the video now. Give me the video right there. I need the volume up. Wait, Liam's not reading. Stop. Go back. Liam is in his own world. Sorry. Listen, sorry. your wife is okay, bro. <laughs> She's all right. Oh, man. Let's start again. The Sephardic chief rabbi of Israel compared African people to monkeys. Monkeys! During his weekly sermon. During his sermon. We don't say a blessing. He needs to be a nigga. Wait, go. It's going hey, too fast. Canada, I need you to <laughs> slow it down for Officer Liam. He's not that swift. We don't say a blessing for every Negro. He needs to be a Negro whose father and mother are white. Stop. That means Edomites took in a black child. That's what he's talking about. Go ahead. You know they had a monkey for a son. You hear this? This is the chief rabbi. Can y'all write Amari Stoudemire and shine and tell them come out of that? <laughs> come out of that. They got to come out of that. Go ahead. They had a son like that. The speech was condemned by many Jewish people. Racially charged comment made by Israeli Chief Rabbi Yitzchak Yosef comparing people of color to monkeys is utterly unacceptable. Why ain't Jay the producer and Vogue, no class Malone <laughs> mad about that? They ain't mad about that. Go ahead. You know, every, these things are really uh, are an insult. When and you, you see know when they he say said that, we, had, we were in Israel when this came out, right? We were in Israel. I wanted to see that devil and curse him out. But our dearly beloved Demona brothers wouldn't allow us to go to the, the great meeting because we would have brought this up. These, these type of things here is really, they, they, feel, they feel that all of us are monkeys. They think that we have no intelligence at all to constantly just stab us in the back and then give us these BS apologies. And these things are supposed to put us back to sleep. This reminds me, Bishop, of the scripture that keeps coming to my mind in the book of Habakkuk. And the reason why I say that is because we constantly uh, fall victim to their so-called apologies because of one reason. Can I read it real quick? Bro? Give me Habakkuk, the book of Habakkuk, uh, chapter 1. Yes, read 9 and 10 and the, the top of 11. That's all I want. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 9. They shall come all for violence. This is the snake's real agenda. Rather, they so-called Jews, regardless of what they are, their real agenda is about murder, rape, rob, exploitation. That's what they do. That's like the scripture said about them in Genesis. There's wars in their heart, and by the sword they shall conquer and take everything. That's the way they are. That's the snake uh, mentality that they have. And Adam, God made them that way. Read. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind. Go ahead. And they shall gather the captivity as the sand. They are about putting everybody in slavery. That's their mentality. You, that's their goal. Our goal is about freedom for our people. Their goal is putting us all in chains. You cannot communicate with these people on one level. Read. 
and they shall scoff at the kings and the princes. Shall Whenever they go and take over people's lands, they get off the throne. We, the hell with you. They just override them like he's nothing. Read. And the princes shall be a scorn unto them. Go ahead. They shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. When they, when they conquer the people, they heap dust. That's like confusing them. Well, they don't understand anything anymore once they take them over. Now they dumbfounded. Go ahead. He puts a spell over them so you can understand. Read. Then shall his mind change. That's the part I wanted to get to right there. That's what we believe. We actually believe that his mind changed. Now he's talking about being a Christian. Now he's talking about poly being peaceful, democratic. No, that's all fool. That's all to make us believe in this crap like what we're looking at. This, this what does it say? Uh, this is utterly unacceptable. But yes, it's going to happen again tomorrow, the next day, the very next day, next week, and we still going to believe this. And there's videos with all these so-called Jewish people cursing out the blacks that's there, literally throwing stuff at them. There's exactly. many videos exactly. on it. Exactly. But this, okay. is, this is an insult. Exactly. Their mind haven't changed at all. They said that to make us believe that they really changed. That's right. Let's read on. Racism lesson. The chief rabbi compared a Negro to a monkey. There are 38,000 African refugees who fled from crisis in their countries, seeking asylum in Israel. Netanyahu believes that these African refugees. Wait, go back. I want y'all to see the picture. Go back. Go back. Right there. They put them up in these prisons. And that's what he wanted to get to. They had just let them out, right? And the dude in Demona was lying to us, saying that they're not here anymore. But they were in the streets. <coughs> Captain Zeph? Bishop, remember, they was also feeding them with drugs. Yes. Keeping them high. Keeping them high. That's what they were doing. I think y'all might have saw the video. We were in the park, and they was and the police was there, letting them give drugs to the, uh, the, the blacks there. That's what they was doing. Netanyahu believes that these African refugees are one of the biggest safety threats to the country. Severe attacks from terrorists, terrorist groups in Sinai. And something much worse. The flood of illegal infiltrators from Africa. So there's a lot of Jake over there in Israel today. And that's what we were trying to get with. Yeah, illegal infiltrators. Uh, right. See that? They're the illegal infiltrators. Right, exactly. exactly. They're all supposed to be in jail, no matter where they are on the planet. They're all supposed to be in jail. You know what? Society society loves the and applauds the sad, self-hating black man or woman who perverts the Bible to excuse the evils that white folks do to us. They love those type of blacks. Okay, they say, oh, do you, ex you excuse the white people? Okay, you can get on TV and spout your, your rhetoric. Give me the video about how can blacks and whites stand together. Go ahead, play a little bit. Okay, you got two black men with the white man in the center. Remember we read it the article, it says they must be in control. Go to eight minutes and 49 seconds. Wait a minute, wait, wait, stop. That brother with the pink. Okay, hold on. Hold on. You know Somebody talk. So now they're talking about racial injustice. Now watch this, brother. Let's listen to what's being said. We're going to, from there, we're going to go all the way to only the 12 minutes. It's about three minutes to 12 minutes. Okay, go ahead. I'd love to hear some, and I think that it would help for those that may come to uh, watch this. Just you um, as somebody that's clearly, I mean, white. I'm not sure if this is going to be in color of black and white, but Garrett <laughs> is in fact white. It's truth. <laughs> um, at the height of all of this, you right. found yourself mm. pastoring a church with a, another African American pastor, mm. and y'all didn't necessarily see eye to eye on this, and there was tension from the top down, and so you've really had to work through this at a real level. So I just love to hear about. It, what things that you learned from all of it that you would change if you could go back and do it? Well, mercy, Stop. right? right. Yeah. We just read about this in the book of Psalms. Was it 55? Y'all remember? Was it 50? Where was it? 58. About charming ever so wisely. About the deaf adder. 
So him and a black pastor could not agree on some racial injustice issues that took place. The black congregants were going to leave the church. So now the white man had to sit down. Wait, my money's leaving. Let me sit down and think about this. Let's play on. Uh, but, you know, I think something you said there a moment ago, starting here, that was one of the things that I, I had to realize this was an issue for me that I needed to, to recognize, that I had really been ignorant for. I mean, I grew up in, um, in, a, in a town where all my friends were white, looked the same, thought the same. All my friends, most of the churches I went to, that was, that was the case. And then now I'm surrounded by people who are, who are different from me in all sorts of ways. So I think one of the things that, that helped was... Um, Shy was the pastor who I was serving with, and I said, I said, Shy, we were having a couple conversations. I said, what do, you, what do you think about me and you having this conversation with, let's invite maybe 15 or 20 other people from our church. So we were at my house, and he shared stories about things that he had experienced. And I mean, I just, I, I had never, I just never heard it from somebody I loved before. Mm -hmm. And he shared things that were hard, that he'd been hurt. Mm -hmm. And God just changed Changed my heart to, to see that life's not the same for everybody. Right. And I mean, it's yeah. changed the way I raise my kids. And I mean, the way we, you know, we got, we got stopped at a, a traffic stop. And um, I didn't have my insurance, my license, or my registration. And I told my, and, and the police officer, white police officer, said, Well, sir, let's get that next time you go on. And I drove off. And I said, Guys, I turned the radio off. I said, I just need you to know that a lot of our friends, they wouldn't have experienced the same. And what do you mean, Daddy? And got to talk through it with them. So this is like, you know, so I want to, this it starts in my family, right? Yeah. And then for, as a church, I'm praying through things. So something happens in the news. And then I got to wrestle with, you know, do I, do I pray about it publicly every single time? Do I tweet about it every single time? And all that, I feel that pressure, you know? I mean, like yeah. on Martin Luther King Day, I want to tweet and be like, I love, you know, I care. And I, but I don't just care today. And like, I feel that pressure and all the time. But I sit down with, with Shai and with other African Americans and said, listen, here's how I'm thinking about praying. Yeah, that's good, brother. What should I see? Because we have, we have white police officers and then we have African Americans in our congregation. How do we navigate this and how do we keep the gospel central? That's really good. And that's, yeah, yeah, that's a good I, thing. Know? Yeah, yeah, it's a win, right? Because right. mm -hmm. five years ago, like, like those thoughts don't come in your mind. Mm -hmm. And there's a segment of the church that feels yeah. like they don't think through me as I come in, but now five years later, though we're not where yeah. we sh we should be or right. where we hope later, though we're not. So the white man's the devil. The Bible speaks of. Give me Sirach twelve and ten. What are you gonna say? Like? Yeah, you know this bishop. When the white man is lying, he's turned red. <laughs> get more red. See how red he get? Because he's lying. Uh, now y'all might be saying, but that y'all are cold hearted. I know people are lying. Some of these women online, I know it's women and you have feminine brothers online. Oh, you are so mean and cold-hearted. Right, we can feel them through the TV. Let me show you what God says about. Now, remember we read in Psalms, what was it again? Y'all help me. 50, 58 and 3, it says they're like the deaf adder that stoppeth the ear. Now watch what God says in conjunction with Psalm 50. Here's a precept. Write this down. Ecclesiasticus chapter 12, verse 10. Never trust thine enemy. Wow. For like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Here with the Bible. Now, that's what God says. Get mad with God. Read on. Watch. The next verse is this man we just watched. Though he humble himself and go crouching, yet take good heed and beware of him. And thou shalt be unto him as if thou had wiped a looking glass. And thou shalt know that his rust has not been altogether wiped away. It's like a looking glass. You ever get out of the shower and the, 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 the mirror is all covered with uh, fog and you can't see your reflection so you wipe it so you can see clear. God says do that with this white man. You'll see that his rust is still there. His evil is still there. That's Don't get deceived by the crouching and the humbling of the spirit. Right. Don't fall for that, God says. That's the dust that we read about in Habakkuk. And he shall heap dust up in their faces. That's why they can't and see him. And then change. shall his mind change. Now you're thinking that he's, now you don't forgot about all this evil that he did. That's the point of that scripture there. Watch this. Keep reading. I'm going to show you precepts with Psalms 50. What was that? 58. 58. I'm going to show you. Keep going. Verse 12. Set him not by thee. Lest when he has overthrown That's thee. That's what happened to us during the dark ages. We set that devil next to us. Go ahead. When he hath overthrown thee, 
He stand up in thy place. Now he's the Christians. Now he's the Jew. Go ahead. Neither let him sit at thy right hand, lest he seek to take thy seat. Lest he seek to take thy seat. Deacon Laba was just talking about that. Black business, businesses bringing in white folks, they took the whole business over. Go ahead. And thou at the last remember my words and be pricked therewith. You're going you're gonna to rue the day you ignore what God says. Go ahead. Who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any such as come nigh wild beast? Didn't we read that in Psalms? When they take over your business, that means you get what you deserve because you should have known to not bring them in there. Exactly. But ain't nobody going to feel it says, who will pity a charmer that is bit? When Jada producer get bit by Vulcan, we ain't going to feel bad. We're going to go, told you, nigga, told you. That's how we're going to say, you should have known what God says about this. You're going to join with your enemies. Are you kidding me? From there, give me, yes. It said that he was, he was telling the story. See, Esau is slick. He, he ain't going to put a George Bush type of Negro in the, between those two. Uh, I mean, a George Bush type of Edomite between them two Negroes. He ain't right. going to do that. Right. He's going to get the one that says, oh, I grew up in an all-white neighborhood, and uh, I was oblivious. I didn't know about the black sufferings until I got stopped and all this other BS. Exactly. All that has to make the Negro believe that he's one of them. Exactly. And just like Deacon Lava said, is what y'all talking about, now you done got comfortable with him. Now once, once you done relax, then the fangs of the snake come out and bite you both in the head and kill you, then they take over your whole thing. Exactly. <laughs> Give me when blacks and Christians collide. We're going to look at from the beginning to four minutes and 20 seconds. When, when blacks and Christians collide. Now, now, wait, go back up. Go back up. Go out, go out. I want to see it now. Go, you see at the bottom, it gives the name of the people. Trillia, Newbell, and Vermin. Vermin. These are the three blacks that's talking. Uh, Y'all see the names, right? Cam, do me a favor. Highlight the first name, Trillia Newbell. Highlight her name. Now go to Google and put in Trillia Newbell and husband. Hit images. Hit images. Oh, come on, Canada. There she go. So oh. this is the devout black Christian speaking up for black people. Can you trust her? Hell no. Never in a thousand years. Her credibility years. is garbage. <laughs> Look at this. Her credibility is garbage. Red shirt, red face. Now, go and back out and highlight the next name. Look at that smile, though. She's with Jesus. Yeah, she got Jesus <laughs> with her. These are the two people you got speaking up for black people. Now go to the video. The next guy, he didn't, he, I don't think, I couldn't find his wife. But I sure was looking. I couldn't find it. So let's go to the video. Go to, uh, start at zero. We're going to go to four minutes and, what did I say, 20 seconds. Just start. So you meet a young black believer, and he's wrestling, she's wrestling with what it means to be black and what it means to be a Christian. Mm -hmm. What are some things we would say? What is some advice we would want to give them? Yeah. It's tough, right? Because if you meet a young white Christian, um, they don't really yep. ask that race question. Is what does it mean to be a yeah. Christian? Right. Now we're black and we live here. You got to throw the uh, modifier. Mm -hmm. They're on the front end. So there's part where immediately, um, as a minority becomes a Christian, you have to deal with yeah. race and Christianity. And yeah. yeah. So, yeah. With it. Yeah. yeah, I think that the first part is trying to help them see that it's a, uh, like, your race is not a bad thing. Your yeah. race is not a roadblock, though you may have felt that way, but mm -hmm. the gospel, it has to be expressed through your race. So I think that it's a good thing that yeah, race comes out on the front end because it helps us to, yeah. to direct them with what their life's going to look like. Yeah, and the, the truth is, is this, this is, we were created by our creator God. Right. Yeah. And so if I were to talk to someone and they were wrestling with this, I would start with Genesis 1 right. and I would end in <coughs> Revelations because right. all throughout scripture, God is calling a people to himself of right. all nations. Yeah. Yeah. And so they can be encouraged to know that God, who is holy and just and who doesn't have to, he thought of them. Once you realize she's married to the devil, it 
discounts everything I, I can't she's saying in other guys, like blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, Bishop, why are you trying, uh, you trying to torture me today? I just got back, brother. <laughs> you trying to torture me with her words. <laughs> We're almost done. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And he created them. So Genesis 1, that's where I would begin. You were created in the image of God. And he delights in you Amen. and over you. And he doesn't have to, but he does. Yeah. That's where I would start. And then I'd remind them that God is not, Jesus is not partial. God is not partial. And Jesus is not partial. He died for every tribe and tongue and nation. And he tells his disciples to go and make disciples of all nations. Right. And so, and then in Revelations, we see that we're all going to be rejoicing together Hmm? All multicultural. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so I would just I would say, oh, that when you are thinking through your identity, your identity is in Christ, right. but He doesn't get rid of your who you yeah. are yeah. as an image bearer. He created your color, right. and right. that's a good thing, yeah. Yeah. and we can rejoice in that. Yeah. And so, I think I would just tell them read the word and be encouraged. <laughs> yeah. Be encouraged. Yeah. 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 Well, it means to be a Christian. Yeah. 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 I, mean, I like. I mean, like what you did there is sort of a biblical theology and you're framing it, I think, in the right way. And so much of it is how we frame it. Right. I think it's right that we say ultimately you're a Christian, but what we're talking about is Christianity as a foundation, right? right? And that sets the, um, the shape of the expression of right. your blackness. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I think what it begins to do is to help us realize that um, you're black, but it's a different type of blackness. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, there's a blackness that's expressed in our culture that essentially says you're black and that means you're divided from everyone else. Right. Um, to be black and a Christian is to, to be shaped. It's almost like you become this puzzle piece that now fits in with other people to become one new man. Yes, we're united, one new man, a new bloodline, and we're, we're, we're ushered into a new family. Yeah. I think that's very important. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know some people- She's ushered into was the white man. That's what she's family she was ushered into. Go ahead. Canada is color blindness. Mm -hmm. So when you man means ultimately your doesn't exist, we must be color blind. Go ahead. Man means Christian and um, you're not black anymore. You're not white anymore. You know, there's neither male nor female, you know, Jew or Greek, we're all He says you're not black anymore, you're not white anymore. Do you think the white man will say he's not white? Oh, hell no. He's going to say, no, I'm white. Not, not only that, they said, and you black. That's right, and you're black. In case you're confused, you're still a nigga. That's what he would that's tell right. you. That's right. He would tell you that. In case that's you what forgot. the articles we just went through were saying, and that's what the scriptures we've been reading is saying. Go ahead. Yes. <laughs> because we are created in the image of God. I think people... Um, like to talk about colored blindness mm -hmm. and they want I think it's a they're trying to be helpful yeah. they're trying to say I love all people yeah. I love you I love all I don't even yeah. see that you're yeah. black <laughs> conflict. yes That's they don't want to they don't want to have conflict right. yeah. but when we do that what we're really I think what we're doing is we're stripping away the Imago Dei right yeah. Yeah. in individuals yeah. and so and so instead, the Imago Dei, that's Latin yeah. for image of God. She's very clever. And, yeah. and the yeah, beauty of God. Okay, I'm just so annoyed. I, give me Isaiah 13. <laughs> she now we a, have to just crush them. Bishop, she needs an exorcism. Her and, the, and Pierre. <laughs> Both of them need an exorcism. Need an exorcism. <laughs> Actually, all three of them need you an gotta, exorcism. You got to strap them down to the chair and read the Bible scriptures about Christ as black. <laughs> to right. the, to the, <laughs> now, we just read in uh, Daniel 2 about the nations shall not mingle one with another. That's one prophecy. Let's read the next prophecy of Isaiah 13 and 13. Let's start there. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 13. And it's going to show us a time period in verse 13. Go ahead. Therefore, I will shake the heavens, and the earth shall remove out of her place. So this is talking about when the Lord returns, this World War Three. Go ahead. So it's giving you a time basis. Go ahead. And the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger, and it shall be as the chased roe. The people of Babylon shall be as a chased roe. The people of Babylon are Edom. Psalms 137 was verse 7 and 8. 7 to 9. Okay, thank you. That's Edom. That's white folks. Go ahead. And as a sheep. That no man taketh up. Like when uh, during the time of, uh, Rod was it Rodney King, when they had the great riot in Cali, and black people was trying to save white folks from getting beat up? 
they like the Reginald Denning, the dude driving the truck. They, they grabbed them and saved them from getting put to death out there. The Bible says, Edom on the day that we're reading about shall be like a sheep that no man taketh up. Nobody's going to try to protect them on this day that we're reading about. Go ahead. They shall every man turn to his own people. It's going to be a new day for racial solidarity. You don't be confused in that day for all you racially confused people out there. You know who you are. I don't know what I am. On that day, you, you better not be confused. Read that again. Every people going to have their own agenda. Yep. That's what that means. <laughs> they shall every man turn to his own people and flee everyone into his own land. Everyone that is found. Every Edomite of Babylon that is found. Shall be thrust through. Shall be thrust through. Go ahead. And everyone that is joined unto them. Like we just saw the images. They're joined unto them in marriage, hand in hand. Go ahead. Shall fall by the sword. They're going to get put to death. You, if you are found being joined with the Edomite, you're going to die on that day. That's what the prophecy is saying. Go ahead. Their children also. Oh, you had kids with them? Go ahead. Shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. That's not what I said. That's what God is prophesying is going to happen. Bishop, you got you to gotta paint the HD TV vision of this. Just imagine that day when everybody's chasing her husband. This black woman chasing her husband, and they're saying, we're looking for your husband to, to, to kill him for crimes that he's committed all the way back during the time of Cain. Because that's when that judgment's going to come on him. Imagine her mind state. Imagine her mind state. This, her husband is a wanted fugitive. She can't hide him. What's she going to do? Her herself is going to She's fall. She's going to die. That her herself is that's going what that to mean. fall. Cause just, imagine what, just imagine her state of mind when, they, when she has to face... The world chasing her husband. Right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.